What is going on guys? I'm in the garage with my 135i and um, in an effort to make this thing more daily driver friendly, I've started swapping in softer springs to my TC Klein coilovers. Uh, as you can see, I just swapped in a 280 pound, eight inch tall front spring. And the problem that has created is that the body of the car is now slammed. You see these TC Klein coilovers, like a, a lot of European style coilovers, don't have independent preload adjustment and ride height adjustment via the shock. So basically all your ride height comes from the height of the height and stiffness of the spring. So when you swap to a softer spring, the body of the car is lowered, which as cool as this looks is definitely not ideal for daily driving. Fortunately, there's actually a BMW OEM part that can be used in this in this situation. So today I'm going to show you what this part is and how it works and hopefully get it installed on this car and get the ride height and the front of the car dialed in just right. So let's jump into it. Now I suppose I should explain why exactly you should do the modification I'm trying to do here. And the solution is simple. On a lot of these European style coilovers, the only adjustment on them is via the spring perch. Now the problem with that is, is that the ride height of the car is more or less dictated by how stiff your springs are and how much you wanna raise this coilover perch up. But unfortunately, with a lot of springs, and in my case, I swapped to softer, taller springs for daily driving, lifting this spring perch up actually binds the spring up. You're actually compressing the spring even at its uh, most uncompressed form, which makes the ride of the car worse. The goal is to honestly have pretty much just a tiny bit of spring tension on here. Uh, a lot of Asian manufacturers of coilovers have uh, separate adjustable shock bodies, which dictate the length of the car. And then obviously this is just for spring preload. Now for spring preload, obviously you wanna move this up so just a tiny bit of tensions on these springs so they don't rattle at full droop. And in my case, due to the way these TC Klein coilover shock bodies are made, I've gone for the tallest possible spring that this spring perch can accept, which is an eight inch tall spring. Obviously, the only way I can raise the car by do with this spring is just lift the spring perch up and bind the crap out of the spring, reducing travel and reducing ride comfort, which is not ideal. So fortunately, BMW's solution should work here with a bit of work. So these are the parts in question. I will flash the part number on the screen right here. Now, these are BMW Rough Road Ride Height Adjustment Thing Spacers, I should say. They're 20 millimeters thick, and as you can see, they basically bolt on top of the strut top and sit between the top of the strut and the strut tower. Now, it's also worth noting that if you want camber adjustment out of the front of your BMW, and you most certainly do, they do have the alignment dowels in them uh, as delivered. So you can knock these out. The best solution I found to do this really quickly with these off the car was to put nuts on top of these studs, flip it over like this, and then put a punch to it and just knock it out really quick with a hammer. It takes a few good whacks and it pops right out. Uh, with that out of the way, let's get to installing these on my car. Dropping the coil over on your E E90 or E82 is pretty straightforward. Obviously you have to remove the sway bar end link from the front struts. And then as an extra precaution, I would actually recommend loosening your coilover spring perch. So that basically there's next to no spring tension on the spring. That way when you go to remove the strut top, you don't have any issues with it possibly popping off. All right, now with the jack under the steering knuckle or the lower control arm, kind of like so. You can remove the top three nuts that hold the strut to the strut tower. On most BMWs, this is a 13. All right, now remove the top nuts and let the strut drop down. So the strut is now free from the strut top and as you can see, the jack is supporting the whole knuckle and front suspension up. That way, you can slowly control how, how this drops down. So just dump on the pavement. You don't tear any brake lines or anything. <sighs> All right, let's lower this guy down. Hopefully slowly, this jack is quite old. All right. And before this gets too low, you wanna have something to support the knuckle while you're working on this. In my case, I have this big cardboard box floating around in the garage. Really anything will work, kind of just jam it onto the rotor or the steering knuckle to kind of hold the whole thing up while you're working on it. Now, if you have an OE type suspension or even just lowering springs on OE style struts, just bolt this on and go. 
However, if you have an adjustable camera plate like a, with a slider, like I suspect many of you do, this is where things get a bit more tricky because as you can see, where the camber, the top, top hat, or the camber plate in this place, in this instance, would bolt onto this, the holes are 180 degrees rotated from where the studs will actually bolt into the strut tower. Now, most camber plates do have camber adjustment both negative and positive, but they're usually designed in such a way that they offer more adjustment negative than they do positive, which means if you install these, one, your camera plates will be flipped around backwards, and two, even if you can slide them the other direction, you won't get nearly as much adjustment out of them. So this requires a bit of thinking. And in all honesty, I tried installing these before and got a little bit flustered and confused, so now I'm back again trying to sort this out, and I think I have a little idea. Now for the coilover guys out there, I bet you're kind of wondering what I'm exactly talking about. Well, here is the issue as it sits. Now, this is the Borschlag camber plate driver side. You can see the little notches here. It's directional, the little arrow facing forward saying driver side. Now, unfortunately, it's supposed to bolt in the strut tower like this, but because these studs are 180 degrees opposing the factory ones, it doesn't actually bolt into the tower like that anymore. Now, if you try and bolt it in, well, your camber adjustment's all wonky. It's sliding the wrong way now. See, if you, adjust, you put in like that, your negative camber is now your positive camber, and you, while there is some negative adjustment, not nearly as much. That's a no-go. No matter how you orient it like this, it just doesn't work. My solution is to take this driver side Vorschlag camber plate, and I'm assuming this works for TC Klein and KW and all the rest, and bring it over to the passenger side and flip it around backwards. Now, by doing so, the plate now now, sorry, a bit confused here, got to jump up my words up. Now, the ride height spacer bolts into the strut tower, those studs line up, and your plate now slides inward, giving you the correct amount of negative camber without messing with your caster or getting anything all swapped around. So, let's put the car together and see if my little idea works. Now, there's some precedent for this, because this is actually an old BMW trick. This is what I thought of. Now, it's actually an idea I got from my E46. Now, in the E36 and E46 communities, a common trick to get additional negative camber out of your stock setup is to actually swap your top hats left to right because the OE top hats are designed with a slight uh, bend in them to accommodate for the spring, which gives you more negative camber when you flip-flop them left to right. That's what originally gave me this idea, so I'm hoping this actually works. So let's put the car together and see how she goes. So we need to make a run to the hardware store, and I'm driving the Kia Forte GT this week. It's a pretty sweet little car. You can check out the review on my channel. I'll leave a link in an annotation. Ooh. Dude, ventilated seats on a 26K car coming in clutch because it's so freaking hot this week. That's awesome. All right, back from the hardware store uh, with six new nuts to go on top of these to mate the um, spacer to the strut tower. Now, for those of you who are curious, this is an M8 by 1.25 thread. So metric M8, 1.25. Uh, these were 40 cents a pop at my local hardware store. With that out of the way, I now have the camber plate and the ride height spacer set up. So for perspective, this is the driver side Borschlag -like camber plate now on the passenger side and flipped 180 degrees. And this is the passenger side camber plate now on the driver side also flipped 180 degrees based on little marks. And both of them now slide in the correct orientation to give me the same amount of camber just like before. Unfortunately, this solution does have a pretty notable downside for those of you who do have camber plates and is that you've now basically lost the ability to adjust camber on the fly because basically you're bolting the camber plate into this spacer first and foremost. So the only way you can now reach these bolts and adjust your camber plates is to unfortunately have to drop the strut, which is a total pain in the ass. But in my case, I'm guessing for a lot of BMW owners who drive their cars aggressively, you're just maxing these things out anyway. So that's exactly what I've done in this case. I've set them to full negative. That way I get the tire clearance I need from the fenders under full compression. But something to keep in mind definitely makes camber changes a lot more of a pain in the ass. 
While bolting this in, it did dawn on me that there is a slight amount of adjustment in the actual bolts in the strut tower that goes in and out. That's good for about 0.3 to 0.4 degrees of camber in my experience. It's worth noting that while setting these up initially, you probably wanna set them in the positive position with the bolts facing out towards the fender. That way you can still reach the strut top nut and get that thing nice and tight before torquing everything down to final spec. You'll see what I mean in a second. So I've now jacked up the strut um, by the knuckle again, so it's actually sitting inside the camera plate and we can tighten down the top nut. Now, as you can see, if you set this thing to full negative, literally the shock shaft is so close to the inside of the strut tower opening, you cannot get the nut on there and tighten it down. So by leaving these top three nuts a bit loose, a bit slack, you can at least pull this out a teeny bit and make it easier to tighten everything down. Every coilover struts gonna be a little bit different, but these TC Kleins use a 19 mil wrench and the top uh, adjuster, where the shock adjuster is, uses an 11 millimeter socket. That way you can hold it in place without having the strut shaft spin as you tighten this top nut down. Now this is definitely an area where if you have the coilovers off the car, you can kind of do all this in one go, and make this much easier. But in my case, because I have limited time and limited resources, it's easier to kind of put the coilover back in the car and then kind of tighten everything down. Fortunately, the torque spec on these is not super crazy. I think it's like 40 foot pounds. You kind of just go until they're snug. But yeah, I'll wrap this up and kind of show you the finished product. Now, a few folks on the One Addicts web forum for One Series asked if uh, fitment issues aside, does this ride height spacer affect your ability to adjust your aftermarket shocks? And the answer is no. Uh, the inner diameter, uh, the ID is the same as the OEM uh, strut tower. So there's no uh, loss and adjustability here. And in fact, because you're now positioning the shock adjuster lower, this no longer hits my stock tower brace the way it did before. So I can actually bolt my tower brace back into place because before the top of my TC Klein shock adjuster right here, this little guy was actually tapping on the base of my strut tower brace. So fitment is as you expect from OEM part, perfect. So everything is tentatively bolted together. I wanna to go underneath the car and make sure nothing on the camber plate is fouling against the chassis. After all, these camber plates are directional according to Vorschlag, so I wanna make sure everything is clearing. And it looks like it is. Fortunately, the E82 and the E90, uh, one series and three series have pretty open strut top areas, so nothing is fouling, nothing's hitting. Uh, this looks good to go. Uh, the orientation looks the same as before the strut height the strut height spacer was installed everything kind of looks the same uh let's get this thing on the ground and see how it looks and check it out with 20 millimeter body lift spacer under the car i was actually able to lower the coilovers a little bit more and kind of dial in the ride height i think this is about perfect the fender is basically level at the top of the tire and so this should give me a more comfortable ride because my springs are basically in neutral preload now or just a tiny bit of preload with those softer springs. And with the body lift spacer, the ride height is no longer absolutely ridiculous other than my bumper fitment, which is ridiculous. And this appears to have worked. So if you are having issues with your coilovers for your 135i, 335i, whatever, chassis, uh, whether it's a KW, a TC Klein, or most of the European coilovers that don't have independent uh, shock ride height and preload adjustment. Definitely check this part out, it does the job. It's, again, it's kind of a pain in the ass with some of the caveats and things you need to know about it, but it does get the job done. I'm stoked, that's awesome. Hey guys, uh, thank you very much for watching the video all the way to the end. Uh, if you found this video informative, please do subscribe. It absolutely helps out my channel in growing, uh, allowing me to do more fun projects with my cars. Uh, stay tuned for more fun content. Do you like the 135i content? I've owned this car for a long time. I haven't made videos on it in quite a while now that I'm no longer tracking it, but I still do, still do a lot of fun things with it because, you know, it's pretty well set up as a fun street car now. You know, it still has a limited slip diff in it, all suspension pushing, suspension arms, the power, blah, 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 blah. It's super fun to drive still. So if you want to see more One Series content, let me know. Otherwise, stay tuned for the next video where I go do more fun things with cars. See you guys next time. Bye.